decision trees. What are they and how do they work? Decision trees are simple models used for supervised classification. We can classify single, discrete target features. They're easy to visualize and relatively simple to construct. A possible alternative of a decision tree includes artificial neural networks. So here's an example of a decision tree. Here I can see, based off of a series of criteria, what I'm going to be doing today. We notice that our target feature is in the leaf notes. For example, going to the cinema, playing tennis, shopping, or staying in. So using this, I can identify based on a series of different features what my activity would be, and that is the discrete target feature. The target feature needs to be discrete in the case of a decision tree. So, how do they work? If you're provided a decision tree, generating the predicted result is not difficult. You simply begin at the root and following the edges corresponding to your feature value. When a leaf is reached, then the classification at that leaf is returned. So for example, going back to my case over here, I can see that my parents aren't visiting, so I just simply follow the no edge. I check the weather and it seems to be windy, so I follow the windy edge. I check that feature of money, and it turns out I'm poor, so I follow the poor edge, and I return to cinema, when we go into the cinema. So to construct the tree, we need to identify the following. Here are three different problems that we need to solve. How can we determine when we need to terminate exploring further branches, so we stop checking other features? How do we decide the order of selecting the features, so what do we filter on by first? And also, how do we deal with any real valid features? What happens if we're looking at, say, a feature's grade point average? So for the first part, we need to look at the terminating conditions. When we are trying to terminate a leaf to get a leaf node, there are three different cases we need to consider. First is when all the training examples belong to the same class. The second is there are no more features to test. And the third one is there are no more examples to test. So case number one, all the training examples belong to the same class. So we are 100% certain, at least based on our training data, of what the tree would look like. If I look at the weather and I notice that whenever it's raining, I always only do stretching, and I know with 100% certainty that if it's going to rain, I will do stretches at home, at least based on the training data. So there is no purpose in doing further verification. For the second case, there are no features remaining to test. So there can be a finite amount of features to test, and it's possible that there's no actual conditional statement structure such that we can confidently conclude a result. So this typically occurs with noisy data. For example, I can look at the weather, then I can look at the time of day, but then after time of day, I have nothing else to check. I have no other features in my data. I'm still not sure if I'm going to go road biking or skating. So based off of this, I might go road biking or micro skating. How do I decide? And there's different options you can do here. You can either do it probabilistically, giving more a weighted probability to the road biking, or we can simply pick the majority element. The third case is when there's no examples remaining to test at all. So this happens when sometimes a branch breaks off. Let's say in this case, I look at the weather, there's sunny, snowing, or rainy. I don't have any examples for snowing, which is one possible case. So in that case, when I look at snowing and there's no possible example, I'll need to look at the parent node, look at its data, and derive a conclusion from there. Similarly, we can also select majority in this case, or a weighted probability depending on the frequency of data from the parent. So, the next step is selecting features. There are too many orders of features to consider. You don't actually know which one is better, which one can we actually calculate mathematically to improve. So instead, we're going to attempt a myopic slash greedy algorithm to look at the search space. Recall that we learned from the previous video from the lossless data compression, this concept of entropy, which is the surprise factor. We define the equation below to be our entropy function, which takes a series of probabilities and multiplies them. For example, if we have 0.5 and 0.5, which means a half and half split, we have an entropy of 1. But if we have 99 items as some value and 0.01 as another, then we have a 0.08 split. The 1 is the highest value you can get because that means that pretty much we're always going to be surprised because there's no definite answer, while for 99 we have very high confidence of a certain value. But with that said, then we can determine the information gain that we can have by effectively determining how much the entropy decreases by. By decreasing the amount of surprise, then we can basically determine which feature is better to test. So we can generalize the provided formula for non-binary non features as well, and this gives us a greedy descent solution, where we try different features, and for each feature, we pretty much determine what the expected information gain would be. So now, how do we handle real value features? So a real value feature, for example, would be grades. So we can discretize the features, which is through bucketing. So for example, I can put grades between 3.75 to 4, uh, 3.25 to 3.75, and so on. We can allow multi-way splits, which is very specific, but this is typically impractical, or we can only allow binary splits, which is also impractical. There's actually an algorithm for this, which is pretty interesting. So the idea is, for one split, we could pick consecutive values and then simply select it to be the median. And then from there, we can determine what the maximum information gain would be. An improved heuristic is we can sort all the points. And between a split point, we get its median again, but then we only really consider it if we have some actual information gain from there. So we have a and Lx, which is on the left side, and B and Ly, which is on the right side, where A is not equal to B, and there is some information gained locally, then we consider it a useful heuristic. So I gave an example on the right side if you want to pause the video and take a look. 
Thank you very much for watching.